and welcome to Crafting a Revolution, the podcast. My name is Katie Freeman, and I'm one of your hosts. Every Wednesday and Friday, well, close to every Wednesday and Friday, we bring you episodes of uh, interviews with female and non-binary makers of all kinds from all over the world. Today's guest is Sherry Shine, and Sherry is a fabric artist and um, mm, fabric artist doing predominantly non-traditional quilts. And, and what I mean by that is she's creating works of art um, that also happen to be quilted. So I may have like fangirled out a little bit in this interview just because once I found Sherry's art, I totally fell in love with it. So, and that's interesting for me considering fiber stuff is not you know predominantly what draws me in I'm I'm definitely uh more into the woodworking and stuff usually but her work is just amazing uh and beautiful so uh I really enjoyed getting a chance to chat with her and and just learn about her journey into it and you know find out that we um you know we're not all that different I guess from each other so um I know you're going to enjoy this interview as well, and I encourage you to uh, make sure you hang out all the way through to the end uh, where we talk about how you can find her work and uh, look to supporting her as well. Before we hop on into the podcast episode, though, I want to give a big shout out and thanks to the patrons over on Patreon. So thank you so much, Lee at Lee Runyon, Annette 513 Woodworks, Katie Thompson, Women of Woodworking, Kevin Lefty's uh, Woodshop, Christy Twisted Twine, Jeremy, Jeremy Spies, Sammy Go Sammy Lee, Rachel Moody Makes, Bonnie Tool Mom Bonnie, Toolmomstore.com, Laura Oakley Soap Company, Brandy Studio Obey, Lee the Rainbow Carver, Ellen Little Bear Furniture, and Ethan Ethan Carter Designs. Thank you all so very much for your continued monthly support of the podcast, helping to uh, produce all of our episodes. So on that, um, I recently posted a story on Instagram. So this week, for example, uh, this is uh, the Friday episode. We did not have a Wednesday episode and probably going forward for a while. Anyways, it's going to be three episodes every two weeks instead of four episodes every two weeks. So still pretty close and still bringing you the same great content, uh, content talking with amazing makers from all over the world. It's just that uh, uh, life has happened and at a stage right now where it is not something that I can, uh, that myself or Katie Thompson can regularly maintain uh, being able to get out two episodes a week every week. So right now it's going to be three episodes every two weeks. So next week you can look forward to, yes, there will be a new episode on Wednesday and Friday. And then the following week, there will be a new episode just on Friday. So that's kind of the new rhythm uh, that we're going to get into. There's still plenty of content though coming your way every month. And uh, we'll keep you updated on any other changes that may or may not be coming around. Um, probably won't be dropping any more episodes, but may be changing, slightly changing um, the, the content produced for one or two episodes a month. So we shall see. That's all I'm going to say about it right now. Uh, but I will stop jam jammering on and on and on. And let's get into my chat with Sherry. <laughs> well, um, Sherry, I like to start by asking my guests to introduce themselves. Would you do that for me? Sure. My name is Sherry Shine. I currently live in uh, Philadelphia, uh, close to the heart of the city. I am a fiber artist. I have been creating quilts roughly now for almost 20 years. Okay. And I absolutely love what I do. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I think that shows through your work. I would say that shows through your work for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So I'm going to take a step back and, and ask the big broad question of, I want to know Sherry's story from baby Sherry, you know, where'd you, where'd you grow up to, how did you get 
into becoming a, a fiber artist and making quilts? Sure. So I was I was literally born in the Westchester area. I went to um, grade school and high school in um, Marinette, New York. Okay. Um, I went to a school called Rynek. I had an art teacher. I remember her to this very day. Her name was Miss Borland. And um, Miss Borland was um, a superstar in my world. Um, I don't know why I always felt connected to art. I could uh, literally, I guess, kind of draw since I was small. I can remember doing, you know, little sketches and things like that. I think all kids do that. Um, but I never, I picked it up and I never put it down. Some people, yeah. you know, children, you pick it up and then, you know, kids go on to other yeah. things, but I did that. Um, and even though I worked in corporate America for many years, I always continued to sketch and draw on the side of things. And Miss Borland used to let me, uh, she used to let me help her curate the uh, many art shows that we would have in high school. Uh, Cause back then we would have um, art shows and she would, mm -hmm. we would hang up the art and pick what would go where. And so um, I feel like I always kind of had that interest in art. And um, out of high school, I did, I went to, you know, college for business administration. Um, I ended up in human resources. And um, one day I had a friend and I, my car wasn't working and I needed a ride. And she said, I can give you a ride, but I have to go to my aunt's house because I have to run some errands for my aunt. And I said, okay. And um, we went into the basement of her aunt's house and there was like, all of these quilts. It was this beautiful studio. She had a long arm quilting machine. And I was like, I don't know what this is, but I think I'm in love. <laughs> and um, I started talking to her um, intently about, you know, what this was, how did she, why did, how did she do this? Why did she do this, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, she was like, you seem so interested. And I was like, I really am. And she said, well, if you go to Walmart and you buy a $99 machine, I'll teach you how to quilt on Saturdays. And she said, I'll do it for free. And I was like, are you kidding? And she said, no. And um, literally that day I asked my friend to drive me to Walmart. I bought the $99 machine and I called her and said, can I come next Saturday? And uh, she said, yes. And uh, by that time I had some fabric swatches that I had gotten and um, she taught me the basics, mm -hmm. you know? And so that's really how I got started with okay. the basics, putting a quilt together. Okay. So given, you know, you said you always were drawn to art. I'm curious why not go to art school? That's a very good question. <laughs> so that would, that would go into detail about me being raised by my grandmother and my great grandmother and my aunt. Okay. And so in their eyes, that at the particular time, especially being African American and a woman, mm -hmm. didn't make sense to them. And they wanted me to be able to sustain, sustain myself and have a better life than they did. Mm -hmm. So since they were going to be partially funding my college education, art was not the way that they were going to fund it. It just mm -hmm. didn't make sense to them. And although at the time when I was younger, it was painful for me to hear that. I would say as I got older, I, I understood mm -hmm. much what they were trying, you know, what they were trying to say. Yeah. 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 I, I, I definitely, that resonates with me. I mean, very, very similar. Um, mm -hmm. I grew up, I grew up in, you know, basically a working poor home for predominantly the majority of my life. And so, when mm -hmm. I wanted to go into art, um, mm -hmm. my mom, who was a single parent, was like, no. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> like, no, you're going to go do something that's going to like make you money and you won't have to struggle. Like, you know, we have to struggle type thing. Um. The exact same conversation that was yeah. happening. <laughs> oh, in so many ways, we are more alike than we are different. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so once you, I mean, so that explains the no art school, but then once you were able to learn the basics of, of quilting, how did mm -hmm. that, I guess, like progress, um, you know, into the pieces that you make now, which I, I mean, they're quilts, but to me, they're so much like there's just so much detail and everything that you add into all of your pieces. So how'd you get, you know, progress to that level? So it's, it's, it's the same young lady. She, um, was, you know, I was learning the basics and I didn't know anything about quilt gills or anything like that. And she, I was working with her one evening and she said, tomorrow I have a quilt guild meeting. And she was like, we're going to have, a a superstar quilter there and I didn't know superstar quilters I didn't right. know <laughs> right. that she said so she said so this superstar quilter is going to lecture and she's going to show her quilts do you want to come and I said okay sure mm -hmm. no why not and the woman when I walked in I was just amazed I was like what I just I was just floored by her work and she did a lot of dyeing mm -hmm. on fabric and manipulating and dyeing images. And I was just amazed. And um, her lecture was wonderful. And uh, that weekend I drove to, it was a tiny art store, not far from where I live. They're out of business now, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And I went in and I was asking a gentleman, do you know of, of products that I can use that I can draw and paint on fabric and it will last, you know, for years. And he was like, Oh, modern technology. Can you imagine modern technology now? <laughs> this was like 20 years ago, but he right. was like, right. <laughs> like, Oh, modern technology. They have, you can do so many wonderful things on fabric. And it's funny because he had a fabric piece, a white piece of cotton hanging in the store and he had, a colored marker, colored paint, colored pencils. And he was like, all of our stuff that we have is down this aisle. And I just bought a bunch of things and went home and played around with them and just found that I really was attracted to um, including painting into my work. And so um, that's began the spark of me creating art quilts. Okay. It took me a while to get there, but that's where it started. Okay. So, I mean, if you don't mind, I guess maybe sharing a little bit about like your, your process, like when you're just starting on a piece now, like kind of what the, you know, idea process is all uh, going into creating it. Um, so lots of, lots of little tiny sketches. I mean, first I'll get an idea. It could be, it could be from anything. Mm -hmm. I'm, I like to work in series. I feel like series keep me grounded, mm -hmm. um, keep me somewhat focused. Mm -hmm. So I am sort of a series um, type of artist. Um, but once I get an idea, um, I'll try to sketch it out. Um, once I sketch it out, I blow it up, um, projector in my studio. So I'll blow it up and, um, yeah, then I start figuring out colors, what I'm going to paint, even if it's on the fabric, sometimes I add paint to fabric that already exists. If I'm going to mm -hmm. add any paint on there. So I really will try to map it out. I am starting to work on more than one piece at a time, but I really am a work on one piece at a time because of the details mm -hmm. and the involvement um, of the piece. Yeah. Um, and so that's how, that's how I, I start just simple sketch and then go from there. 
What are some of the series that you've created so far, like the themes of them? So um, one of my popular series is The People in the Field. And so that is about all of us and how hard we work. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what we're interested in, what we're striving to be, all of those things happen through our hard work. Mm -hmm. And um, it's also um, pays homage to my great grandmother, my grandmother, my great grandmother was one step from the cotton field. Mm -hmm. So um, my people in the field, I don't necessarily show them picking cotton, but I show them working hard. Mm -hmm. Because, um, you know, that's what those ladies did to sustain me and the rest of my family. They were the matriarchs and they were extremely hard workers. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's what sparked that series. Um, the series called Count Your Blessings, because when we were locked down, I just tried to remember how blessed I was to be here how happy I was to know that I'm an artist and that I could create. And so the Count Your Blessings series came, um, developed out of, uh, of COVID. Um, I'm starting to uh, become interested in improvisational quilting. And that's because I have a lot of scraps left um, from when I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's probably going to be one of my ventures for 2022. And I have a wonderful series called Unbreakable, and that's about family. Mm. And so, um, you know, it's, it's always a husband and a wife, or I just did a commission where it was a husband and a wife and their three children. Mm -hmm. And um, they're standing on spokes and the spokes are a symbol for sometimes how slow things can move for African-Americans and how progress can be a little delayed um, for us. And that came from one of, I got the idea from the snail in Norman Rockwell's painting. Oh. Yeah, so um, I can be inspired by other artists in different genres, in different mm -hmm. ways as well. So those are some of the series that have been extremely popular um, this year that I've been working in. Yeah. Uh, for the the Blessing series the with COVID, I feel like so much amazing art across all kind of different genres and medias have has come out of COVID. Um, you know, I think <laughs> somewhat of a blessing making us all have to slow down and get out of the busy hustle allowed us to create and it also allowed us to um, given everything else that has happened over COVID has allowed us to pause and maybe see a broader world. Um, you know, and, and reflect on that. And I think it's pushed a lot of artists to push how they create and what they create. Yes, absolutely. And, and those are the things that, you know, happened, you know, to me. And those are the things that I thought about absolutely during COVID about the little things, you know, we, we, we don't pay attention to them. We don't, mm -hmm. I don't know, we don't think about waking up every day and feeling great and being in our right state of mind and being able to go and create something. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those, are, those are fantastic things to be able to do every day. And so you're right, that is where um, that, that series came from. And I think you're right, there was a lot of fantastic art created, you know, created during um, that time, especially the lockdown period where you yeah. just, it move around you know like mm -hmm. you want it to so yep. um, yeah it gave you a time to sit and be still and and yes um you know just tap into your creativity yeah yeah I mean I I know personally it you know allowed me to try out some different techniques that I had been wanting to try out and just you know had kept putting on the back burner because I had 
things that, you know, took higher priority. Um, so it allowed me to be able to push my work in that way. And that was exciting. And to tell you the truth, now that things <laughs> feel quote unquote back to normal, there are some times where I'm like, I, I kind of miss quarantine. <laughs> right, 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 right. You know? <laughs> Yeah, I think when I think about that series, I'm like, would that have come out of, would I have created that? Would I have thought of that if there wasn't COVID? I don't necessarily know, you know? Right. I, I don't think so. I think you're right. I just, you know, we would have continued on with whatever we were doing. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I just thought that, um, you know, it was a it, it was an interesting period and it all depends upon how you do look at things. So mm-hmm. I do agree with you on that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, are you um, like, do you get to be a full-time artist now? Yes. Yeah, so now I do get to be a full-time artist um, and I have been a full-time artist. Uh, this is just recent. I would say within uh, the last three years I have been a full-time artist. I also think during COVID, I was, and that's another reason why I did the Count Your Blessing series, because I was extremely busy. Mm -hmm. I think people wanted beautiful things to put on their wall, you know, to, to sort of, you know, push away all of the, because it was just a a lot to take in for all of them. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, and it happened so it happened in in my world it seemed like it happened so fast and it was just a lot to take in so i think that people really wanted things uh, beautiful things or interesting things or something that they related to some type of message you know on their walls and so again i was blessed you know mm-hmm. to be busy during that time yeah does that mean kind of like prior to that you were still doing like corporate and then art kind of on the sign? Yeah. So I, I worked from home for a while and then, you know, would work from home, shut down my laptop and go downstairs in my studio and work, you know, start working on, on my quotes. But um, yes, um, I transitioned from, from that to being a full-time artist. So. Okay. And it's, it's, it's awesome. It's yeah. awesome. To think that. It feels weird, but it's like awesome. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, do you, you know, given uh, all those uh, women who raised you, mm-hmm. what do you think their thoughts would be now? <laughs> It's so funny. You, I, you so funny. You say that. Um, I often do think about that. I think that they would think it's even weirder than what I think. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, my aunt, before she passed away, she saw some of my work and a couple of magazines that some of my work had um you know, ended upon, but she still knew that I had a job. But I, I think that she was proud to know that I I took the initiative and that I was, you know, tapping into um, the, the art, you know, because mm-hmm. I would show her something. She'd be like, can I have that? You know, like, you know, yeah. a magazine cover or something that I had done. She would ask me if she could have it. So I, I think that she... Um, was like, wow, you did it, you know? Mm-hmm. She wasn't the type of person to express that, right. but, <laughs> you, you know, that wasn't going to happen. But um, I do think kind of quietly to herself, you know, she was um, proud. I can't imagine what my great-grandmother would think. Like, what? <laughs> I don't believe you don't have a job, you know? <laughs> I do have a job, an artist. Right. <laughs> Um, was there, no, it's right, right. you know, right. You understand, yeah. right. You know, it, it takes even you a little while. Sometimes I still wake up and I have to grasp it and tell my, you know, mm-hmm. so yeah. 
Yeah, I definitely, I definitely understand that. I mean, I'm still, um, like, I'm actually in the process of uh, trying to get into grad school to get a, a master's of fine art um, nice. in mm-hmm. furniture design. And mm-hmm. my bachelor's was nothing to do with art, like, really right. absolutely nothing to do with <laughs> art. Um, right. And so, like, even going into it, it's, like, really a lot of time, like, going through this process, I keep getting paralyzed by this whole, like, you know, the, the imposter syndrome in my head of like, what the heck are you doing calling yourself like an, right. an artist thinking like, right. this is something you can go do, uh, right. <laughs> you know? Uh, so yeah, I definitely, I definitely uh, get that as well. Hey makers, today's episode is sponsored in part by toolmomstore.com. At toolmomstore.com, you can find any and all tool-based merchandise for all genders, all sizes. They've got mugs, they've got shirts, all kinds of cool stuff. I have uh, one of the shirts myself that has the uh, hashtag woodworker on it. And I also have a couple of the mugs that define what and who is a tool chick. So super excited with the merchandise that I have. I know that you will be satisfied as well. Um, And also, great discount for those of you who listen to the podcast at checkout if you enter the code maker mom you will get a 20 percent discount off any of the merchandise that you buy so that's just toolmomstore.com all right let's head back into the action did even though like the you know and totally get it their understanding was or their thought was get a job to sustain yourself was Mm -hmm. there creativity in their lives like on a just for themselves level well my aunt she was a magnificent crocheter Mm -hmm. and we have gone to back in the day Woolworths plenty of times and gotten me yarn and needles and it was like I don't know I didn't get (laughs) yeah I have a girlfriend who does it. I admire it to this day, Mm -hmm. but I could not get that. I tried. And I mean, we tried a lot of times Mm -hmm. and I I couldn't, I couldn't get it, but give me a sewing machine. And now we're talking, (laughs) (laughs) but I couldn't get it. I don't, I tried so many times, but yes. So she was, um, she was fantastic. She was a fantastic crocheter um and apparently on um my cousin's side we did have a quilter apparently um way back Mm -hmm. um one quilter that i that i know of Mm -hmm. but other than that i don't know of anyone else outside of those two ladies yeah Mm -hmm. that's Mm -hmm. uh yeah where where did i get it from i don't know (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah, I think my, so my mother-in-law does both knitting and crocheting and uh, same way. I'm kind of like, I just don't, I don't get it. Um, (laughs) It's so beautiful though and amazing, but I can't. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. My, my wife has actually tried several times to pick up knitting from her mom, you know, like same thing, buys the yarn buys the needles, yeah. like, buys the how-to books, sits down yeah. with her mom, goes through it all. It happens about every other year. Yeah. <laughs> like we have several little squares about this big of like right. knitted things <laughs> and then that's about it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I understand. I understand that. Um, so getting into fabric arts, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like it's probably I, that there's a lot of women in the field of fabric artists, mm-hmm. um, but are there a lot of African-American women represented in the field? I think so. I, I, I think so, but I think, I think to different degrees mm-hmm. of being in it. I think you have your traditional quilters I think you have your art cultures. I think you have your people. People think it's all one thing, but it's it's just right. like the other types of yeah. art. It's not all <laughs> one. Thing. I think you have your 
improvisational quilters. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there are different categories and I think there are different degrees of African-American women in the industry. I think you have your superstars and I think you have your stars <laughs> and then I think you have your up and coming stars. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so I, I do think though that it is a very interesting time for fiber and, and quilts if you are an artist. Um, it seems the spotlight and the focus um, is on this particular genre right now. Mm -hmm. So it's an exciting, it's an exciting time. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it, it, it can be an exciting time if you're an African-American artist working in, in any field in the arts. Um, it's, it's a time where it's nice to be seen and recognized. We've always been here. We've yep. always been honing our craft. We've always, I think, been focused and working hard at our craft. Mm -hmm. And I think it's nice to be recognized, becoming, you know, people noticing that um, art is so much more than, right? It's so much yeah. more than the, the color of our skin or the artist. It, it, it's, you know, it should speak to you. Yes. I, you know, I think, I think being the creator is a small part of it. Mm -hmm. I think to me, the art itself is the biggest piece of it, you know? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I, I, I would agree. Um, I think, I guess I would say that with each of my pieces, I always feel like a piece of me goes with it. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, cause I definitely put, I put some soul <laughs> into it when, yeah. when I'm yeah. creating it. Um, and so it is interesting to see other people's interpretation of it as well, or how it resonates, you know, with somebody, um, whether they purchase it or just, or just view it. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. do you feel like, I mean, I, I feel like I, there's a certain answer I would say to this, but do you feel like the recognition towards african-american artists across all genres um has i guess maybe increased uh after the murder of george floyd or do you feel like it started before that i i feel like it started before that i think unfortunately with his passing it it heightened mm -hmm awareness mm -hmm. but I, I think like there are a few artists that I know that I think were be were being recognized for for their talents mm -hmm. I, I think I mean and and there are so many before Trayvon Martin but yeah, yeah. he was I've done political pieces but he was he was it broke my heart because i have a son. So I did a piece around his passing. I think some people's deaths just have just this overwhelming yeah. effect on you. You don't know them, but you know them, you yeah. know, yeah. you don't know them, but you are connected to them. You know, um, in some sense, we, you know, we're all a part of a community, whether we, you know, whether we like it or not, we are. And so I, so I think that it's, it's a new, it's like a coming of age type of thing where I think it was happening before him, but George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, you know, mm -hmm. for me, it was Trayvon Martin. It's just some, you know, some, it's just gut wrenching, yeah. you know, it's just gut wrenching. And so as an artist, you, the only way to, to me, the only way to express how I felt besides crying was to make something, you know? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think that we're, we're in a particular time where everyone is paying attention. And I think that that's a good thing. 
Yes. The more that everyone is paying attention, the better we can try to make and fix things that are just not right. So, yeah, that's um, talking with another um, artist this week. I, we kind of talked similar about this similar topic. Uh, and I said, I think, again, I, I feel COVID is horrible. <laughs> you know, all right. the deaths that we've had from it and, and everything like that. I would not, I wish that wasn't the case. Right. On the flip side, I think it allowed this opportunity for people to not just keep scrolling and look away. Right. Um, Because the reality is, like you said, African-American artists have always been (laughs) and always (laughs) been there. Um, Your everyone's stories have always been there uh, and have been being told. uh, Right just people who look more like myself have chosen not to engage in that or stop and really listen and believe and you know and like to relate to it to feel that you know (laughs) the gut-wrenching part of that of like watching anybody's life being taken taken away right um, right Right. should horrify you (laughs) Like, right. you right. know, um, yeah. not being able to scroll past that has made people engage more and maybe yeah. try to seek out to um, educate themselves more. Yes, yes. And I think that if, I mean, unfortunately, there have been so many George Floyds and there are probably so many George Floyds that we don't even know about, unfortunately. Right. Yes, yeah. But I do think, again, you're right. The more that we can bring attention and not look away, that's very, that's very important. And whether the person realizes it or not, when they don't look away, that's a big step. Yeah. That's a huge step when you don't look away, whether you realize it or not. Um, And it can be the beginning of so many different things Mm -hmm. that can turn into so many positive things. Mm I, I do agree with you about the not looking away. That's very important. Yeah. With the, we were talking before I started recording that mm-hmm. you have, uh, you're represented by a gallery. Is that a, lo- is that a local gallery in Philadelphia? No. So I am represented by the wonderful ENS gallery. They are out of Louisville, Kentucky. Okay. At this point, they have probably been in business for 30 years, and I have worked with them consistently for almost, yeah, seven years now. I've worked with them consistently. Um, They do a wonderful job. I think that's important if you're an artist and you're looking for a gallery, um, behind the gallery, are people. Right. <laughs> you know? It's not a machine. Behind the gallery are people. And I think building a relationship with um, your gallerist is, is very important. Um, I think that it, it doesn't happen overnight, but I think, um, you know, when you find uh, their husband and wife team, I always feel like they have my best interests at heart. Mm -hmm. Um, They do a wonderful job of promoting my work. And I, to an extent, I am a full-time artist because of them. Mm -hmm. And so I know sometimes galleries get a negative connotation, but I think as an artist, you do have to shop around. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think you have to not spread yourself too thin. Um, you know, maybe you're the type of artist that can be in three or four galleries, but then that's three or four personalities that you're dealing with, right? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? And then along with that is also the tricky business of art itself, you know? There's a lot. It's so funny. Me and my husband just had a conversation about this the other day. You know, what is your goal as an artist? Thinking about that, you know, who's your audience? You Mm -hmm. know, do you want to be in a gallery? 
What are your expectations if you want to be in a gallery? What are their expectations? You know, it 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 is a working relationship that is constantly evolving. Mm-hmm. So I think those are all important things to think about. It's like any relationship, nothing is perfect. <laughs> um, but I think that everyone can, you know, come find a happy place, you know? But I think it's the artists, um, they saw me at a show. So that's okay. my story, ENS Gallery. They saw me at a show and they like my work and they commissioned me to do something for them and I never did it. <laughs> I was like, I'm, I don't know. Yeah. You, know. <laughs> you know, you get, you get mm-hmm. around the edges, you get sensitive, you start not taking people, you know, a little bit seriously. You're right. like, okay, <laughs> thank you. You know, and, mm-hmm. and I went to, I went to a show and they were at that show and they were, they were representing other artists and they said, Hey, you're a quilt lady and you never made our quilt. You know, I was like, Oh yeah, I'm so sorry. You know, (laughs) yeah. Yeah. I kind of laughed it off and me and my husband, we went, we toured, we looked at the show. They were on the first floor. We came back and they said, we would like for you to seriously create some artwork and we would like to try to sell it to our collectors. And they said, we can, we can start small. And they asked me to just create four things. They, and they said, what, and I love that part. They said, whatever you want the four things to be, mm-hmm. if you want them to be abstract, if you want them to be images, they were like, we just love what you do. So whatever you come up with, and and so then I felt like a lot less pressured. Yeah. Because when they first approached me, they wanted like a 60 by 60 for some huge wall. And I was like, what? You know, so <laughs> <You're right. laughs> yeah. so maybe they got that. And they were like, just four small things. And I did four small things. I sent it to them and they sold them right away. And they called me and they were so happy. And I was so happy. And that was the beginning of our relationship. And since then, um, I've just done, I've worked on so many wonderful projects through them and so many wonderful commissions. So it's, it's been a really good, solid mm-hmm. working relationship. Yeah. Were you working with any galleries before them? I wasn't. I was doing, I think, what most artists do, especially when you have a day job. I was like, hey, I'm an artist. I make quilts, you know, telling my friends and my family and them telling their friends and their family. This was before social media. So because, you know, you're doing face to face, you're having a conversation. Mm -hmm. And I used to go on the road with my work, you know, so a little bit of building my brand, which is how I met ENS Gallery. I was on the road and I was, you know, selling, trying to sell my work. And that came about through my husband because he was like, I, I, I think I really was doing quilts and really doing them somewhat for friends and family. Right. And my it was like, I think your work is great. And you, you know, and he found the local show here in Philadelphia and I, I did the local show and was pretty successful. So I think you have to, you know, you just got to kind of believe in yourself too, as yeah. an artist. It's hard sometimes to put yeah. yourself, <laughs> you know, it it's is. very difficult to do that because you know, you're, you know, right. You're opening your soul, you know, yes. you're. <laughs> People don't look at it that way. I don't think, but you're giving people a big part of you yeah. when you say, this is what I make. This is what I do. This is my passion. You know, it's a, right. you give a big part of you. So I think that I feel like I took baby steps, you mm-hmm. know, I feel like I took baby steps one thing at a time. Um, and you know, that, that has, that has helped, that has helped with, the no, this is not going to work or the no, you know what I mean? That helps you do the baby steps first. Yeah. 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 I mean, do you feel like, because you kind of have been like in the, in the muck of it all, like slogging it through the muck of it all, do you feel like that um, made you more open to those conversations with the NS? 
Yes, I think by the time I think by the time I saw ENS, I hadn't done a ton of shows, mm -hmm. but I had done um, enough shows. And I'll be very honest with you, I had had enough. You know, unfortunately, there's a negative side to artwork too. I think that I had had enough uh, negative experiences. Mm -hmm. um, to know what a positive, possibly a positive experience right. feel like. Um, I mean, when I met them, it wasn't all bad. You know, I was, you know, I was moving along, doing my mm -hmm. thing. I had, you know, a couple of shows, successful shows underneath my belt. Um, and, you know, people kind of approaching me, excuse me, about, um, you know, different projects and things. But I think I took them the most seriously because of their pitch. Mm. You know, give us these four small things. We want to we want to work with you in the future. You know, here's our gallery. Here's what we do. Look us up. We don't have another quilter. You know, we love fiber. We think there's a market for fiber. We think mm -hmm. collectors are interested in fiber. And this was, you know, seven, eight years ago. And so I think those types of things are made me instantly feel like, okay, they have my best interest mm -hmm. and they want to help me develop my career. And, and that's yeah. kind of what they've done. Yeah. Okay. Do you feel like some of those are, or maybe I'll just start, I'll start smaller, taking a step back. <laughs> Can you tell me more about, when you reference some negative experiences? Sure, I have, I, I think, I think you, this, I'm, I think a lot of artists have this experience where people become so enamored with what you do that they kind of want to see how they can involve themselves in it. Mm. And I think sometimes as an artist, you're so happy that someone is so excited about your work mm -hmm. and overwhelmed with your work that you want to give them a chance. You want to try to work with them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they may not necessarily have pitched you on anything. You right. may not necessarily know their background or things like that, but you're just so happy because you're thinking this could be my chance to get more exposure. Right. This could be my chance to grow and develop and get myself out there. Mm -hmm. So in hindsight, I think you have to step back, do your research. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so I didn't do some of those things. So I don't totally blame the folks who uh, maybe necessarily I gave them my work. They didn't want to pay me for it. You know, mm -hmm. after I know it was sold and things like that. Those are right. some of my hard but I don't overall necessarily blame them. It was a little bit of me too, being so excited, so wanting to get out there, so wanting to be a part of this large art community and having exposure that in the past, those were some of the mistakes um, that I made. So um, again, I think it's important to do your research, find a place or places that might be a fit for you and then, you know, go from there. Yeah. Yeah. I, de I would totally agree that I feel like probably most artists or craftspeople, you know, go through the same, the same thing, especially it's like, yeah, when you're really trying to get started, even the idea of, um, of exposure, you know, yes. Yeah. It, it's so enticing right but yes. it's like it takes a little bit to learn like oh yeah exposure doesn't pay the bills <laughs> <Yeah>. um <laughs> it doesn't pay to like even if the bills just means like that the art's paying for itself and yes buy more materials and equipment and all that stuff um yeah it, like <laughs> i actually just had that experience today not directly with um my art but in working with um uh, brand sponsorship because you know I somewhat am do the content creator influencer side of things as a way to add more funds into uh, into right. the business and so right. I just had a brand that I actually enjoy working with but 
two years ago, I gave them permission, you know, to use a piece of my content for free because that's really what I was doing at the at the time, just trying to get exposure. And they reposted right. it today. And I'm like, uh, today, no. yeah. like today, you pay me, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I understand yeah. my worth now, and like yeah. I know why you're posting that because you're gonna get great um, uh, engagement on it. Yeah, you know, like it was a good piece of content, and I know that. So it's yeah. like, you know, I shared with my network of like reminder: even when you're starting out, know your worth. Your any yeah. work that you do is worth something. Yeah. Um, you know, so I think, I think artists, but maybe even more so uh female artists undervalue ourselves and our work and are willing mm-hmm. to like be like oh the exposure is enough or it's worth it enough to just like get my name out there and in the end it's it's not because you're starting a pattern of being expected to work for less or for free mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Definitely, i think as artists who you know we don't think about contracts yeah <laughs> paperwork yeah <laughs> i'll be right yeah <laughs> you know because you know you want to create you know yeah. you don't you know you feel like i at least i know i do i feel like oh this is this is bogging me down right this is <laughs> this is numbing my creativity it's, right. i don't i don't i don't you know i don't you know even money you know what do i charge for this right. it's all, i was like <laughs> i want to make stuff you know but un- if you if you if you want to make it a career and you want to enjoy and it goes back to what you're saying if you want to pay the bills and mm-hmm. keep the lights on and the mortgage and gas in the car and food on the table those types of things it really is a business mm-hmm. <laughs> and as an artist you have to figure out ways to protect yourself yeah. <laughs> And even though you, you know, you don't want to think about that, you got to think about it. You just, Mm -hmm. you just do, or, you know, you will end up sometimes, unfortunately, having horror stories, Um, Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why it's, um, I, I, say, you know, to people who do go to art school or who are looking for it like the advice of look at that program that you're looking to go into. Do they include business classes? If they don't, then add them in yourself because you become a solo entrepreneur the second that you start trying to sell your work. (laughs) So you are a business owner. And so you need to like understand that. And, you know, especially if you're going the schooling route, like give yourself a little bit of a head start and learn some of that before you're actually trying to sell your work. Yes. I I have a young lady uh, that I'm somewhat trying to mentor. And we just had this conversation because she's in school and she um, shared a piece of artwork with me that she wanted to put on social media. And so I, I, I asked her a few simple questions. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, who's your audience? Um, you know, what is, what is your price point going to be? Mm-hmm. You know, did you think about how many hours you worked on it? And mm-hmm. she was floored. And so I said, right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know all of the classes that she's taking. So I right. said to her, what classes are you taking in college? <laughs> it's so expensive. And, you know, and she said that they it was so amazed by this. I've thought about it the last couple of days. We had this conversation maybe three or four days ago. She said that they have um, uh, area in college for art business. And so she was like, that's where all of the people who are interested in the business of art go. And I said, I don't, (laughs) I I really didn't understand what she was saying. Cause I was like, you're, you're interested in the business of art. Right. (laughs) I was so, I was shocked and I don't, I don't think that she ever thought about it that way. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, she's just taking these classes to help drive her creativity. Right. Creativity. She's doing all these different assignments that teachers are giving her to spark her creativity. 
Well, along with, and I know I was the same way. It's a little bit, you're a little bit detached from the business yeah. part of it, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. You know, um, I can't say it enough because you're so interested and happy that you're creating and mm-hmm. people are interested in what you're creating, but there's so much more. The business part of it is just as equally as important. Yeah. I mean, I think the lesson I've kind of learned the hard way, and I'm still trying to work around it, which is just because I am on fire about creating this thing and I created it and I'm so happy with how it came out. Doesn't mean anybody else is interested in this thing that I created. (laughs) You know, Um, especially in my world of woodworking, it tends to be more of like in sharing my work, then people are like, oh, if you can make that, then you can make this. Right. Right. And it's like, I yes, I could. However, I don't want to. Like, that's right. not what I want to make. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, this is right. what I want to make. Um, right. And so, like, yeah, just even the how to find an audience, like, I didn't, it wasn't until being, until I started going, hmm, maybe I'm an artist more than a woodworker, to even uh. start going down the path of, like, learning about galleries and, like, learning about, like, what how to do that kind of thing or like what to even go down um like again it's not (laughs) it's not something that you know like you said there's different types of quilting there's different all kinds of different types of art and people try to categorize stuff to go into this one specific category right right work that way (laughs) right 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 like I was like do I call myself a quilter they're quilts right um but they're not traditional quilts um, even now I struggle with okay a fiber artist um, but what does that really mean you know so <laughs> I, fiber artist but then I'm leaving out the part about the quilt you know so it's right. just it's so it's 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 part of it is being a comfortable in your own in your own skin and saying I feel comfortable, like, you know, this is, this is who I am. This is, mm-hmm. this is, this is what I'm, this is what I'm doing. You know, it's, you know, sometimes as an artist, as a, a, a you know, as, as a fiber artist, people think you, can you make me a dress? No, no. I can't make you a dress. <laughs> can you make curtains? No, I can't make curtains. I want to make curtains. Yeah. No, because <laughs> once people, once people know that you know how to sew. Right. <laughs> I'm sure it's the same thing with wood. They think yes. you can anything in their yes. house. <laughs> yes. I have if I have this piece of thing hanging and can you, you know, I'm I'm sure they think you think you could fit, you know, and yes. that's yes. not what you do, you right. know. So <laughs> it's, it's, those conversations are always funny and interesting. Yes. Um, yes. You know, and you know, you just try to let folks down, you know, gently. But I yes. think I think the interesting part of that is you now know what you want to do and what you don't want to do. Yes. And I, <laughs> I think it's a journey to figuring that out, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a journey to figuring out. I want to do this and I don't want to do that. So, exactly. um, yeah, I, 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 but I can't, I can't say it enough about uh, being an artist and the business part of it being attached to, to it as well. And so I hope the young lady that I'm mentoring um, just kind of understood, you know, where I was coming from in yeah. terms of, it's a big step when you say, I'm going to put myself out there. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you don't know what's going to come back. So um mm-hmm. You know, you just kind of want to protect yourself as much as you can. You yeah, know. exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Sherry, I'm watching the time. And so we've hit our hour. Um, oh, it went by so fast. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, I want to give you a chance, though, to let people know, like, how they can find you and follow along with you and see your work. So I don't um, have a website. I really, I did, but it didn't translate well. And I, I don't want to be long-winded about it. It did translate well. So I am on Instagram at shine underscore fiber. So you can find me out there on Instagram. Um, 
I, I think I post more now on Instagram than I do um, on Facebook. And yeah. I really just post about my art. So because mm-hmm. that's what's most, you know, that's one mm-hmm. of my favorite and important things. So if you go on Instagram and find me, that's what you'll see. Um, I don't do a ton of posting, but I, I, I post um, when I can. So. Yeah. Yeah, I will. I'll include the link to that, and then also to the the gallery link, which I think you have in your Instagram. Um, yes, you can see some of some yeah. of my works. Yeah, thank you so much. So yeah. I'll uh, link to those in the show notes. And thanks for taking the time to chat with me today. Yes, it was awesome. I had such a great time, and thank you for inviting me. And don't forget to send me your address. Oh, I absolutely <laughs> will. <laughs> Okay, so again, that was Sherry Shine, and you can find the links on how to follow along with her and her work in the show notes for today's episode. So the places to go to find that, first, check the description for the episode in your podcast app. Next, if you happen to be watching this on uh, YouTube, you can check the description box down below. And lastly, you can head on over to freemanfurnishings.com forward slash podcast and find this episode as well as all the previous episodes. While you are looking at show notes, make sure that you follow along with the podcast over on Instagram. That's just at crafting a revolution. Okay. And uh, if you've been meaning to check out the podcast on YouTube, you're not going to find it under Crafting a Revolution. You'll need to go to uh, Freeman Furnishing YouTube channel. That's where I've been posting those at. And speaking of Freeman Furnishings, when I am not uh, chatting it up with amazing makers and artists and doing podcast episodes, you can find me designing and making furniture, home decor, art, all kinds of crazy stuff over at freemanfurnishings.com and at Freeman Furnishings across social media. I am most active, like pretty close to active on a daily basis on Instagram at Freeman Furnishings. And uh, second in line to that is TikTok. So come on over, say hi, um, tell me your favorite episode on the podcast. Love hearing that kind of stuff. All right. So look forward to two new episodes next week. And as always, let's go craft a revolution. Shoot her.